I have been super obsessed with this cute witchy farm sim recently called Wildflowers and I think you guys are gonna like it too. This is a really great game and since it actually just won the Apple Arcade Game of the Year, I know I'm not alone in thinking this, but since it only recently arrived on the Switch, there were a lot of people just discovering it, including myself. I have been loving it, I've been exploring it, I have been doing most of it without looking online and I've learned a lot of things along the way, so I wanted to share a list of 10 things with you that I wish I had known before starting. If you're watching this, you're probably new to the game, you may not have started it yet, or you might be really early on. So I'm going to keep this spoiler free at least as much as possible. You might find out some little things, but it won't be things that are really core to the story. So let's tuck in, I've got 10 tips to share with you today, and the last one is going to help you make a lot of money fast in the early game. So I plop this game into two categories, the farming and the magic. And the magic really shouldn't be too much of a spoiler since Tara is literally holding a wand on the cover of this thing. I really do hope I haven't just ruined that for anyone, but there is definitely magic in this game. The main storyline itself is closely tied to the magic side of things. So if you want to explore, do the farming, do all the sort of mining, chopping of wood, that stuff, you can actually do as much of that as you want and then check in with the magic storyline and do all the sort of magic objectives when you want to get back into the story. To go a bit deeper into the farming, you begin with a very small plot of land. You can unlock a larger plot of land, but you need wood, money, and a whole lot of soil in order to do that. In fact, you need 50 lots of soil, and my main tip here is to stockpile soil as early as you can. Ignore everything else. And there's only one way to get soil in this game. So the way you get soil is to build a compost bin, and then every day you can put two weeds into the compost bin. It takes that whole day to turn those weeds into soil, and that is one soil. And without 50 lots of soil, you cannot get the bigger patch of land. So my biggest tip, you can leave after this bit of the video if you like, my biggest tip is just to get more compost bins. Prioritize compost bins over anything else, over vegetables, don't even bother. Get those compost bins, stockpile 50 soils as soon as you can in the game. Soil is also useful for building the veggie patches themselves. It can be useful in spells later on, sort of magic -y things. But if you want farming to be a big bit of your game, then you are gonna want those 50 bits of soil as soon as you can. Just like Stardew Valley and other farming sims, you can upgrade your tools and you can do this by getting materials down in the mines. It is definitely worth doing that at your earliest convenience. It will save you a bit of energy and a bit of chopping every day. My next tip is occasionally when fishing, a bottle is going to pop up. To get this bottle, and indeed to get any fish, you wait until the little animation is on the line and you hear a bit of a splash. Usually Tara will also say something to indicate something's on the line. And when the fish you want is on the line, then you start tapping the button to reel it in. If the fish you want is not the one on the line, or if it's a bottle you want and that's not on the line, then basically you just wait for that same thing to happen. The bottle will kind of animate towards the fishing line, the same as the fish, and the same animation basically happens when it's on the line, and you tap to reel that in, and you will get a recipe. Another fishing tip is there are a few different options for bait in this game. There aren't many fussy fish in the game, but there are some that you will definitely need to use specific bait and be in specific areas in order to catch. There is a website that covers so many things about wildflowers and I will link the fishing page down below in case there is anything specific you want to catch. For example, sea urchins sell for the highest amount, I think it's about $80 per sea urchin, and you can only catch them with crickets. So that's worth knowing and it's worth checking the list for more fish you can catch. My next tip can be seen as a little bit of a spoiler, but I think that this is worth knowing and it's pretty easy to figure out within the game once you start playing, and that is that the story progresses when the season changes, but more than that, you get to control when the season changes. There are missions that you can do that will trigger the events for the season changing, so look out for them, and if, for example, you've got crops or other things that you just want to do within that season, hold off on doing all of those storyline missions until you know you're ready to change the season. However, you may actually want to change the seasons because when you do, you get a nice little energy boost. So that means you can spend a bit longer fishing, mining, or farming, or doing anything really without having to use some sort of boost to your energy. My next tip, and please do listen to this one, and that is that foraging is your best friend. There will be things that pop up every single day on the island. Do your best to collect as many of them as possible. Even if it's not useful in the early game, these things will be useful later on, and not everything is available in every season. Moonflowers are a particularly good one to stockpile in the early game, especially because this is the only thing that grows only at night, 
only in the forest and only every few days. So once you get it, I think you then have to wait sort of three days before you can get it again. And moonflowers are really good for the early game spells. Yes, I did just change camera angles. I was sat on my feet and they hurt so badly right now. I'm gonna power through. I feel very aware of my hands at this level, but we're gonna power through. It's gonna be fine. We are at my eighth tip now, and these are the three spells that are my favorite in the early game. These are the spells that I reckon you should be using every day. They make the game so much better, so user-friendly. I love them, so. So the first one is the energy potion. It is incredible. In the very early stages of the game, I was making myself this like herbal tea that would bring your energy up. As soon as I tried the energy potion, never touched it again. The energy potion basically just takes you from zero to full energy again. So you can stay in the mind so much longer. I basically found that I would have to have like double the amount of energy that I was given in order to make it through a full level of the mine to make it to the next room. So I would always make sure I was going in with enough energy boosters to take me through to the next level of the mine so I don't have to do everything again because it will regenerate every time you go down. And if you're someone that likes to feel like they've played like the full day, then you probably will want double the energy that they've given you and you can do that through food, but it's very, very useful easy to do it through this energy potion and it's really easy to gather the ingredients you need all you need is seaweed and two mandrake flowers secondly and this one is essential to me to take away the one small irritation i have about this game and that is the summon small things incantation Something I actually really like about this game is that when you're selecting something like say a tree, it will automatically select your axe to chop it down, the pickaxe against rock, everything like that. You don't have to select the watering can, it will water the plants for you. That sort of thing is really user friendly and I love it. But after chopping something, for example, there's going to be wood to collect on the floor. And if you're darting around doing things quickly like I am, it's very easy to miss selecting the wood and select the tree and start chopping instead. And when there's such a small amount of energy and when the animation of chopping takes a bit of time, it's just really annoying. So something I will do instead is to have the summon small objects incantation activated and it stays activated for about three days once you use it. And that way I'm just whizzing around and the objects are coming to me instead of me trying to pick them up. Totally getting rid of the risk of me getting irritated at it, chopping another tree down when all I want is to pick something up. That's probably a very much a me problem, but if you have that same problem, then you are gonna love that spell. The last spell, and honestly probably the best spell, as soon as I use this, not a single in-game day has gone by without me using it again, and that is the speed boost spell. Oh, Tara is not a slow chick anyway, but the speed boost is just a game changer. Like the other incantation, it takes about three days to wear off as well, so you only need to gather the forageable things for this every three days, and it's actually really easy to forage for as well. For all the incantations, which includes the Summon Small Things incantation, you need paper and ink, which are both easy to get. And for the speed boost incantation, you need the witchweed, which grows outside Thomas's farm near the beach, and you need seaweed, which grows at the beach. My next tip is actually to do with speed as well, and that is that you can change the game speed whenever you want to within just the options of the game. So they've got a relaxed mode, a normal mode, and a challenging mode. So that changes how long an in-game day lasts. If you've got a day where you want to talk to all the villagers, potentially you want the relaxed mode. Or if you just want to quickly be going around getting all the forageables you can get, and maybe you want to get to night faster, then the challenging mode might be what you want for that day. Okay, we're at tip number 10. This is my last tip, the tip you've been waiting for if you are short on money in this game. And yes, it is kind of hard to get money in the early game. Now the easiest thing you can do to get money, especially in the early game, is to sell fish to Bruno. But the real money maker is selling fish sticks to Sophia. So when you sell items to store owners in this game, you can unlock more items that they can sell you. There will be this sort of bar at the top of their shop menu with stars. Once those stars are all colored in, once they're all yellow, that means you've unlocked everything that they can sell you. Once you've sold enough fish to Bruno, you'll unlock the ability to buy tuna from him. And that is the cheapest fish that you can use the fish sticks recipe with. Now dash across to the shop and buy as much flour as you can from there as well. One fish and one flower is all you need to make the fish sticks recipe, so run home and make that. Then dash to the cafe and sell as many as you can to Sophia for $100 a fish stick. I kid you not, that is 
definitely some sort of weird thing going on in the game. Fish sticks should not sell for $100 and I think you can actually turn that off. They've noticed that that's a thing, a kind of cheat within the game. But honestly, I don't see it as much of a cheat because to progress in the game, you generally need more than just money. You need wood or you need 50 soil or just something other than just money. So to me, I don't mind that it's a bit of a cheat on the money side of things. It doesn't really take away from the story and doing a bit of a grind. As a bonus tip, I would say to hold on to some of your tuna because that is the cat's favorite thing. And it means that you can grow hearts with the cat all the easier. That is it friends. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did, then please do give it a like. And if you want to see more cozy gaming videos, then consider giving the subscribe button a little tappy tap. I really hope you enjoy playing Wildflowers and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.